Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Best Damn Sports Show in Franklin County for Wednesday, January 13th, 2021. I'm the Nighthawk, along with our studio engineer, Mr. Alan Ritchie Cunningham. On my left, Mr. Super Dave Handy. In my far right, my pal, Mr. Duke Forrest. Yeah. And just <clears throat> quick weather, Duke. Um, is it me or has it been an incredibly mild winter? Yeah, pretty much. The daytime highs aren't too crazy. Burlington's average temps right now, average high of 27, and it only goes down maybe one or two more degrees, average low of 10. So daytime highs haven't been too crazy, but nighttime lows have been soft. But absolutely, I mean, I'm, I'm loving it. Arctic cold, the older I get, that's the last yeah. thing I want to see is I think we're going to be vortex. good now, what, next week? Kind of like Sunday? maybe getting a little colder next week. I think next Sunday. It sounded like a messy storm Saturday and somewhat colder air coming in behind it. And I now, didn't see anything too crazy, though. When you say a messy storm, I mean accumulation? The are for, you the, the, well, I can tell you the forecast for, I think, Friday night into Saturday is... Next Tuesday, 17, low of 1 below. Oh, okay. Uh, Wednesday, high 23, 3. 23, 3 below. 21, 6 below, 18, 2, 1, 2, 10, 14. Those are the lows for the next. Okay. So, so okay. it looks like I, we're going to be getting some real January I had noticed weather. that. That'll be the first real, yeah, yeah sustained Arctic yeah. cold. Oh, um, I'm sorry, Nighthawk. What would you just ask me? Oh, accumulation on Saturday. You said a uh, messy storm. All I know, the forecast is, I think, rain, snow to rain, then back to snow Saturday when colder air comes yeah. in. So, Just sounded like a messy storm. So, um, Burlington's about a foot below. Burlington at this point had about 19 inches seasonal snowfall, about a foot less than what, what they should have had. Yeah. In fact, I saw Mount Mansfield. I think Channel 3 reported that uh, within the last week. Mount Mansfield, I think, 15 inches at the snow stake. Fourth lowest snow total at whatever the January date was in, in, in its yeah we're uh, we're in a drought weather history yeah. yeah so all right let's get started my first question mm, David mm, do you like me uh, well uh, of course um David do you like Duke of course mm, yeah. do you like us enough to like treat us to Kapalua Maui. <laughs> Well, the next time I win, I'll be glad to take you guys oh, with me. Come on, David. I'm thinking, there, like, if David's really nice, he would take his pals, the Duke and Hawk. So I'm going to start with golf tonight. I know that's not everybody's favorite sport, but definitely my favorite tournament. I watched every single Did minute. You, so you heard your good friend Justin Thomas's homophobic, which I didn't hear, homophobic it slur. It wasn't that bad. I didn't. My God, people I, are The only sensitive. way I heard it was... I saw it on the internet, and then they, it was barely no, audible. Right. Yeah. Now, before I forget, um, and I'm always, I'm a choir boy. I'm always looking for a foul language. Patrick yeah. Cantley? Cantley. Cantley. He, uh, I heard him say, I can't make an effing long putt, no, something right. like that. God, do you think they'd be a little more aware of that? But. Well, they should have. Of course, I don't think, I think in their heart of hearts, they don't really care because they're thinking maybe they'll get a little extra yeah, really. viewership, maybe huh. because they give a golf a little more coarseness. Deuce, um, Do you swear on the golf course, oh. David? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've, not, I've only golfed with you once. I... Uh, not when I'm playing well. Okay, <laughs> but uh, that's that's about once every six years. So. Okay. Hey, you miss a three-foot birdie putt. And something you'll you'll say something you shouldn't be saying. Um, or in my case, a three foot bogey or double bogey putt. Well, now Duke and I don't swear, and I golf with Duke quite a bit. Now the Duke will say, "Duke, you idiot!" You know he'll do something like that. How could you make a shot like that? Yeah. But he doesn't throw f bombs around. When uh, yeah, when I'll we're bother. playing, I will say that even if I'm playing lousy, I try not to spoil. The round for the other guys, yeah, yeah because good. you know uh, what's worse than playing with somebody? Because a couple of times last year, uh, you know, you get hooked up in a club championship or member guest or member member or something, and you're playing with guys you don't normally play with. And I played with a few guys. They just 
go off the rails every oh, bad I, shot really and you know it just sounds like that must why? get old pretty quickly doesn't that's, it? that's that's and uh i had a, a pro one time i was in a pro am i don't know if i told you guys this story but yeah. i was um it was the format was you play your own ball but if you get more than a bogey you pick it up it was down in boston so Every tee ball, the first three or four I hit, boom, <laughs> out of bounds or gone. And finally, I threw something. And the pro looks up at me and he goes, you know what? You aren't good enough to throw a club. <laughs> and, you know, you feel like you're about that big. And uh, so anyway, uh, no, uh, but swearing on a golf course, that goes back all the way to uh, old Tom, whatever his name, Tom Morris. I'm sure... I'm sure, but uh, these um, with these microphones now on every hole and everything, they should use a little um, yeah. a ten second delay. Right, or something. the old days used to be a seven yeah. second delay. Yeah. yeah. So, but, but uh, um, getting into the tournament, and I follow golf, probably not as intently as you two guys, but I've, I've got to be honest, the top two finishers, uh, Harris English and Joaquin Newman from Chile. Um, never heard of these guys before. Okay, Neiman. I had never heard oh, yeah, of Neiman, no. uh, barely, but oh, Harris English is a very... Yeah, kind of a very good second-tier kind of yeah, guy. Ne Neiman's good, though. Neiman's a young guy. He, Well, he was obviously there, and they let some, what, the tournament, the uh, FedEx, some of those guys in, right. like my man Xander Shoffley. But those are, everybody there is a good guy. But Neiman won at least once or twice, obviously had to... Have one. He's a, I know him pretty well. He's he, uh, one of the very good young golfers. Well, about 155 pounds. Yeah. Not a very big. Fall. Well, Palmer, yeah. Palmer and Ryan Harris Palmer. English were tied after Saturday, and neither one of them, the one had hadn't won in 10 years, and the other one hadn't won in six years. Yeah. So, those guys, but they were in the top 15 for FedEx points. Again, I, I, so I, they're good golfers. They just haven't won. Well, that was one of my questions to you, Duke. Was there were 11 tourneys canceled last season, so they had to f fill the field. Yeah, so they were, they what was the had procedure of, of, of doing that? And again, they filled it, obviously, all the winners, as always, got invited. And I think every winner except Rory, didn't I think Rory could have been there and wasn't there. And I think just with the final, the FedEx Championship, the Tour Championship, I think everybody who was in that last round, I think, who wasn't a winner, got to go. Folks like Xander Shoffley, who, of course, had the low score over the 72 holes, but didn't win, still didn't get an official win. Um, so, again, this was still pretty legit. I heard everybody say, I think we should go back to just winners only, but it's not like they did anything too crazy. But well, you're right. They just want right. to do for this have a year. Few more fine, but they, yeah. but they have sure. to. They best not change their format because oh, I no, saw Justin Thomas and a few other golfers right. basically saying this tournament has to mean something. Oh, it's sure. called the Tournament of Champions. Sure, yeah, but I think that was fair. They wanted a few more bodies here. It's not like they dug too deep, but no, I suspect they'll yeah, go back Yeah, and when you have 11 tournaments that got canceled, you got to... Yeah, no, I think that was very reasonable, and I'm sure they'll go back to just winners only. Yeah, yeah. hole number 11. Is there a more beautiful hole in the world than hole number 11? No, Pebble, Pebble Beach has Pebble Beach uh, has some pretty nice holes. The uh, the scenery, when you when you stay there at Kapalua, if you... Now, you've played hole number 11, right? I have. I... I, I don't we played the the back nine first huh. and then they uh, then went on the front side and I do remember the back nine is beautiful and your uh, the views when you look out now the hotel if you were on the course the hotel is way down below by the by the shore you can't really see the hotel but you're looking at what's that other island on the back? Is that Kiowa or something? Or there, because there's another uh, island not too far away from Maui that you see. As in one of the main four I four. No, Hawaiian it's island. a smaller one. Oh, I'm not a Hawaii guy. But it was it was beautiful, and we did when we were there. I they had three golf courses. I think they only have two now. I think they, I just hear references to two, and they just play, the uh, pros just play one. We uh, went scuba diving 
Wow. There's the reefs. So, anyways, when I and, asked you earlier in the show if you like Duke and myself, I when I was watching, I said, well. Oh. Our good friend Dave Handy has played there before as he enters the twilight of his life <laughs> and he looks back, aside from his kids, uh, his biggest moment in his life has to be on the Best Damn Sports Show and I think he just wants to show his love and bring the Duke and the Hawk. Well, uh, you know what the problem yeah. is with that trip? It's too damn long. Yeah, not a short trip. It's, uh, you fly to Chicago, then you get on a plane and... We were on a plane so long, the last four or five hours, even the flight attendants were sitting down. Nobody yeah. wants to do anything. It's like 13 hours. I yeah. should know this, and I, and I don't. How far out in the Pacific from the West Coast is Hawaii? I mean, oh. It's about 3,000 miles across the country. Is it another three or more? Yeah. I should yeah. know that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's probably at least it's another four three or time so. zones. Well, if I it's think four, I th if it's, it's four, four time zones, zones from California, I think. Oh, from California? Yeah. Well, it sounds like maybe Three or a little four, more than anyway, yeah. So I told you, I went to Hawaii eight years ago, maybe, and I remember flying yeah. into LAX going, oh, boy, we're almost there. And you're absolutely <laughs> right. You get on the plane. It's still it, a it's hike. A, a flight that never ends, and the flight attendants, you didn't see them. They, they just got in their They're seat. They're shot. Yeah. Huh. It, just, right. it just absolutely killed you. Plus, Where, when you get there, yeah. then you land in o o Oahu. Then you got to fly from there oh, okay. to Maui. Okay. So you, uh, it's a, it's a long. You need about a month to recover from. So Maui. pretty much, if you're coming from mainland U.S., you're landing in Honolulu. There's no way you're landing in Maui. Well, Maui? I think some of the jets some go to them? Maui. Okay. I, it all depends, yeah. but. No. So, the tournament. I mean, again, the course is beautiful. Where they beat up great, the course, low great scores. Great guys, and I th immediately thought of you, Duke. That. I know you're not a lover, of course, a par, nor am par I, 73. that uh, somebody wins a tournament with a 25 under. Yeah. So I'm going to myself, are they making this too easy? I mean... Well, you know, you know me. I mean, I love I mean, I'm not going to beat up the Masters, but I mean, just the way pros beat up the par fives. I love tournaments that are par 70s. I hate four par fives. Typically, they just beat them up so much. And of course, Kapalua just has one par three. So you have the very unusual par 73. But it's such a magical place. I don't think they I don't think anybody's losing yeah. sleep that their winner was but minus 20. Now, the course next week or this week is pretty flat. And, oh, yeah. and, it, and it's not a it, real fancy golf course. The it's not Sony, around. Sony no, Open. It, it, it pales. Yeah, it's a lot. Not much water, if any, yeah. is there no. on that course? And this is on the is it on the Big Island? No, this no? one is on uh, Oahu. Oh, is that right? The next one, but the the one okay. that just got over was on was, Maui. Was Maui? Maui, Maui is is beautiful, and there's yeah. very very strict zoning. <clears throat> you can't build anything. Huh. Um, it, there's still a lot of, at least when we were there, uh, pineapple farms and yeah. things, and still quite rural. Huh. They, yeah, I probably should make it to, in fact, I've never been to Alaska either. I think aside from those two states that I've never been close to, no Montana, no North Dakota, and Idaho's a question mark. One time in Salt Lake City, I purposely meant to go to the Idaho border not far away, and I'm just not sure I made it. Uh, Duke, my second honeymoon? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Say so I was married 2003. I called the sports show from Alaska. From Alaska. I, I don't know if you remember that or not. Huh. I got to a payphone and, <laughs> and and called. So yeah. um, and what I remember about Alaska and people ask me about that. Um, if you've lived in Vermont, you've pretty much have seen Alaska because I just remember being on the cruise ship and people saying, "Oh, honey, look at the mountains, the snow," and I'm going to myself. Where have I seen mountains and snow? Oh, my God. Those are big, aren't they? Oh, it's oh, big. Oh, sure. I mean, Denali, Mount McKinley, the highest mountain in North America is about 20,000. My yeah. son-in-law climbed Denali. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. Just, a little, as, as, just last year or two years you're ago. Talking to someone who's got a Mount Everest book, of a million of which I've read, there's always something like that on my bed. So that's impressive. Duke, how that's can you no easy name climb. the mountain I presume was after President McKinley. Yeah, I think and, that's... Uh, and, and take away the honor. 
Uh, well, Denali, Denali is just kind of the local, I think, maybe indigenous name or something. But you don't call it McKinley, because I remember you corrected me about a year I'm, ago. I'm not, I sure I should, I don't, I'm not sure I meant to correct you, but I think Denali is probably, uh, these days, in these PC days, probably the the preferred name. But you know, Well, McKinley, it's also whatever. a name of a upscale model of every GMC that we sell. So we're more than glad to call right. everything Denali. <laughs> oh, is that right? I didn't <laughs> yeah. know that. Yeah. So and yeah. Bryson DeChambeau, what a sweet, humble person. He seems he like a very decent guy. And he just keeps talking about uh, increasing his speed. Yeah. Uh, it's just, I mean, his body, he, uh, football players don't even look like him. This mm. guy is just thick. If he's not careful... He's going to end up like Tiger Woods. Mm. And after uh, I was telling Duke, I watched <clears throat> the Tiger Woods special. How, is that a, a two hour? It's about two hours on HBO. One, just one, one. There's part? two, uh, two, part. two parts, okay. but the first part goes mm. up to uh, before the uh, fall. <laughs> okay. Oh, is that right? Before the episode and the escalate. Mm. But let me tell you something. For his father, he, I mean, his, his father, father kind of a, talk about a hard ass, huh? Oh, bad. And his mother is wasn't much better. Is that right? Mother and wasn't much better? From the time this kid was born, um, his father was pushing him as yeah. the black Sa uh, savior, whatever. Uh, savior of, of golf. Really? Interesting. And, and what really was disappointing was when he was on Oprah Winfrey after winning the Masters or something, he says, well, I'm not really black. I'm... I'm Asian. Is that, he said he said that. Huh? Yes, he <laughs> goes. I don't consider myself black. Really, I consider myself Asian. And huh. you, after watching that, you can see why he turned out the way he did. I mean, this kid as, was as in as in not being not not a nice person. Right, and and uh, his father used to bring a Winnebago around and did some Winnebagging in it with some local honeys. So really? while Tiger was just a kid, so the uh, the old man, and then the old man was really pushy there. I'll tell you what, I watched that. I also watched a couple weeks ago a special on the Bee Gees, mm -hmm. especially after they uh, the disco thing and the Saturday Night Live. Yeah, watched things on the Beatles. You watch Michael Jordan, the price of fame. Is not worth it. Yeah. Those I wouldn't swap places with any of those people. The what they go through, the anguish. Uh, I'll give you a little story. Michael, Tiger, Michael Jordan's father was murdered in North Carolina, right? Is that worth it? No. Tiger Woods had a girlfriend all through high school and college. Blonde, cute girl. When he was coming home one weekend from oh, I heard Stanford, the, I heard the story. <laughs> when he was coming home from from school one weekend, he spent the night at her place before coming home. Right. <laughs> well, when he got home, um, his parents had a fit, both of them, said that's not part of the plan. The next day he writes this letter wow. to the girlfriend and says, I hate you. I never liked you. I don't know why I'm even there. Now, these guys, they've been going out for three I'm years. I'm confused. Um, Why did the parents not like him with this gal? Because, no, because she wasn't part of the plan. Right. You know, he want, he, they he, got a plan for him. They don't want him shacking like, up before he's married. They don't want him know. knocking up some girl. Right. So anyways, and the girl saved the, the letter. Wow. Tiger. And you, you listen to it, and you know he didn't write it. You know his mom and dad did. Right. That's the kind of... No. Of parenting, that which is right. And now I've yet to see yeah. the show, but my recollection <clears throat> is he really loved his father a lot and deeply missed him when he died. Uh, well, Unless he's a good actor, no, I'm not sure he had. Yeah, what's what's he going to do? What's How's he? he uh, how does he know what love and respect? What had happened was once he finally got to be Tiger Woods. He and his dad had a falling out and weren't together very much. No, really. And then finally, when the old man was sick and then, but they never really had a reproachment before he died. Really. Huh, interesting. According to, okay. 
the thing and uh, sounds like a good sounds like a good show. It 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 is now. Tiger's agent Lee Steinberg. God, he's been his agent forever. Said that it was just slander and malicious and all that. But what a what a surprise. But the uh, who, uh, who 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 did the who did this? I don't know HBO. It was because yeah. I thought it was going to be one of these puff pieces on him and, and anything they, anything but huh? Well, they they. Sounds they, like it was a fair. Sounds like it was good. The fair guy, stuff. hey, and he was good. He was amateur champion, U.S. amateur champion three times. Yeah, ago. Stanford, great career. Stanford, Stanford, he he was good. Noah Noah Bate is uh, Noah. Ben, ben, yeah. Forgot his name right. Close something like that. It was hey, uh, at Stanford. But that's Noah the problem. Begay, They're like the Beatles. He's like Elvis. It was just yeah. crazy of what happens. And uh, his friends were uh, Jordan. And Charles Barkley. Wow. So they're not actually giving him good <laughs> advice. On, though I really love Charles. Yeah. Charles, I, like, I think, certainly. I like, I like guy. Charles. I agree. I guess Charles, I've been getting into the Shark Tank, which meant nothing to me until uh, I've been watching Shepard Smith on CNBC, does an hour, very solid news show now, seven to eight, followed by the Shark Tank, which is kind of a fun show. But um, Sir Charles is going to be one of the folks on Shark Tank for any Shark Tank fans. I've been watching, my wife got me into that show. Maybe four years oh, yeah. ago. Yeah, it's a That's kind decent, of fun. decent show. So the uh, big news today in sports. Yeah, we have some big news. Happening during the 4 o'clock hour. Uh, the most selfish basketball player in the league was finally traded. Um, James Harden in a four-team trade. Hey, but at least a guy can play. At least the Nets can count on somebody maybe showing up once in a while yeah. and playing yeah. hard. But they hated him on the Rockets. So right. the four-team deal, the Nets get James Harden in a second-round pick. The Rock, okay, the teams involved were the Nets, the Rockets, the Cavs, and the Pacers. So, again, the Nets get James Harden in a second-round pick. Rockets get Victor Oladipo. Dante Exum, Redonis Curix, and four first-round picks. Four first-round yeah. picks. And wow. four pick swaps. Cavs get Jarrett Allen and Teron Prince. Pacers get Cavus Levert in the second-round pick. So big, 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 big. Now, wow. uh, Kevin big. Durant has somebody yeah. to play with because Kyrie Irvin, and we said it before, and I'm we not said it. being mean or picking on him. We said but, that from day one. But, hey, Nets, good, good, good luck. You guys have no clue what you're getting he's into. Got a head, he's Mentally got a problem, yeah. wrong with him. Mentally wrong with him. And for the love of him, I hope he, he it was a no call, no show. Just so supposedly, I was hearing today, supposedly the Nets, Nash or the whoever, the president know, knows what's up with him and stuff, but uh, good good luck dealing Supposedly with Supposedly he's, he's sitting out the season because of the business. So sitting out the season, maybe? With the capital, of, huh. uh, the rushing. The, there was he, a he, video some, of him that came out. Yeah. His sister's 30th birthday was the other night. Yeah. Big, big party. He was there, and course nobody was worrying i'm mass. sure wearing a mask and being nobody, socially distanced right, no they're all clumped together nobody wearing a mask but Kyrie physically is great but uh he's just not all there and i just again you know i don't want to sound again like a choir boy but uh he needs to get help and at the very least you don't want to go to work even if you do have some personal issues, well, probably call money. your employer. Mm -hmm. Well, you think when you're getting 30 million bucks a yeah. year, you better show up for I work. I suspect money is probably not a problem for him. But what is the first thing we said? I, again, when I think of it, I thank my lucky stars every night that he's no longer on the Celtics. But uh, I can remember the story the Boston Celtic beat writers. The first thing they wrote when he left was, hey, Nets, good luck. You guys have no clue what you're <laughs> going to be dealing with. Well, Duke, you remember... Tatum's second season and Jalen Brown's third season, they both kind of plateaued. And people were yeah. saying, geez, what's, Thanks, wrong? Kyrie. what's wrong with these guys? Right. I remember telling you, Duke, they don't, they don't see yeah. the ball. And they get rid of Kyrie. And Tatum yeah. has an unbelievable top 10 player in the yeah. league. And uh, Brown's a, a top 20 type guy. Yeah. And when they traded... Uh, to the Bob, not Bob Kent's, uh, Charlotte. Mr. Who, Gordon Hayward. Gordon Hayward. And I said, don't worry about it. They'll just give him more touches. 
and they've, yeah. they, they've played well. Poor Gordon Hayward, for the record, seems to have landed on his feet pretty yeah. well. I guess I'm kind of wondering, gee, Gordon, I realize you were injured half the time with the Celtics, but, geez, I'm sorry the Celtics didn't get out of you what seemingly Charlotte's getting at. It sounds like he's playing great. Well, he needed, but just a different, different he needed team. to be the man. Yeah. He was never going to be the man. Uh, so I guess they knew what they were doing. A lot of people said, what is Charlotte? That's insane. Uh, I guess maybe they knew what they were doing. Yeah. How's their record? Actually, I do. Uh, I could dig that up. No, I can, I can, I can beat so? you to it. I've got it right here. So they aren't really think, that good. No, I don't think. A great he's just record. good. He's just a good player on a bad Charlotte team. Charlotte is six and five yeah. right now. Yeah, 500 team and, probably. Um, staying on the court, hard court Celtics were playing tonight. God, that's gone, right? And that's their third straight game called mm. off due to COVID. And it was a home and home with the uh, Orlando Magic. And they were supposed to play the Magic Friday. Well, uh, Orlando did not leave Orlando, didn't fly up mm. to Boston. So my prediction is they probably won't play again. Friday for the fourth straight game. Wow. And four games is a week's worth of uh, basketball. I don't know if they put a buffer at the end of the season or to, well, to make up these any, games. Any concerns that basketball may be? Of course, we have the same concerns about baseball with their shortened season. I wasn't convinced they'd pull that off. Even they did. But uh, some concerns that basketball may just kind of go know, under. I've seen some quotes from players saying, I'm going to do what I want to do. Um, so, you know, I, if I were running the league, I'd get those guys all vaccinated and get it all out of the way. Yeah. That's what you got to do. Yeah. Because they they aren't going to behave. Now, I tell you, well, um, unlike unlike the good folks in Tuscaloosa, I'm glad they they treated their victory celebration so carefully to see the pictures from Tuscaloosa. I didn't see nothing. Oh, yeah. hundred thousand people downtown. Yeah. Partying. No matter. I mean, talk about I, I hope Dr. The good Dr. Fauci wasn't didn't see didn't see that. Well, I'll tell you what, that Alabama team. Boy, that's a good that's a good team. That team could be half the teams in the NFL. Yeah. I don't love Nick Saban, but I I got I've got, got respect for yeah. yeah, Alabama talk about an unreal program. And they get rid of they lose one guy and the next guy they put in is just as Not good. Not to mention a ton of their assistant coaches every year. Do you know what he does literally after the game? He's on the phone recruiting. Well, that's yeah. a God's honest truth. I bet he maybe well, took Dave, a day, a day off. The game, yeah. And Devontae is leaving. We'd really <clears throat> like you to take his spot. Yeah. Uh, Devontae Smith was mocked to go to the Giants, 11th pick overall, huh. quite a bit. Now, after that performance, he's gone before 11, night, I assume. He may uh, go one or two. Uh, they're they're, they're or, thinking well, number one. three. Uh, is that right? You know, well, Lawrence going to the Jags, one, and no. uh, Fields or Smith going second to the Jets. Um, I'll tell you who uh, improved his stock, too, was Mac Jones. Mr. Mac Jones looks like a boy. He doesn't get Jeez, great the guy words. Got, the guy had, did you see his statistics? He had so. he had only uh, four interceptions out of and 40-something TD passes. But I love how, I love the line on him from people who just keep, if not putting him down, just don't give him much praise. Well, he plays for a team that's so good. They're almost a pro-like team. He doesn't have to worry about being rushed. His receivers are wide open. Gee, you might want to give the quarterback a little credit. Um, I will give him a little credit, not, but not, that, not that much, quote huh? you just made is yeah. so accurate. How many great quarterbacks yeah. with all the greatness of Alabama for the last 15 years, yeah. how many Alabama quarterbacks do we have in the league? Two. Well, Mr. Two. Tua. We got Mr. Tua. And, and the line on Tua today was what, some of his okay. uh, teammates not happy with him or no, something? No, no. Uh, there are a lot of people on Miami that they're not impressed with Tua whatsoever. No. I I always Gee, thought you might, Tua you might was give a, the guy a chance. Was a product of his system. Huh. And Jalen Hurts, who technically is an Oklahoma graduate, right? But he uh, he had four years at Alabama. Tua, uh, uh, Jalen Hurts. Do you remember? No, no, he transferred. Yeah, he had that, Tua took he, a spot. Right, but and then he transferred. He waited a year though. Oh, he so he was a redshirt freshman. Yeah, and then he played a year when they won. Then that was the year Tua came in. <clears throat> and then the next year, he sat the bench. He sat the bench, and then Tua got hurt, and they put him in, and they ended up winning the game. Mm -hmm. And then the next year, he went to Oklahoma. Yeah. So he he's uh, 
he's been a good soldier. I like that Jalen Hurts. Oh, he's, he's a decent right. fella. Now, in fact, I watched a mock draft today, which yeah. – some people Talk, like imagine imagine you spending yeah, some time. Some people the like to do heroin. I, I I've probably watched a hundred mock drafts on YouTube already. Well, better better choice than heroin, I think. Yeah, uh, they had Mac Jones going to the Patriots at fifteen yeah. today. Um, I'm watching Boston sports tonight. Not a bad suggestion. Chicago's kind of tired of Trubisky, but he's played well the second half of the season. Well, he didn't, he that, certainly didn't have a good playoff game. That, that might be a landing spot, you know. I, guess I think Jimmy G isn't isn't Jimmy. I would think. I think Jimmy yeah. G shows up in Fox for him. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, I, I spent way, way too much time doing mock drafts, and I, I really shouldn't be looking at those until after the free agent period right. that starts in March. I'll, I'll tell you what, I bet you Alabama, between the guys that are going in the first round this year, the ones that will be going in the first round next year, and the ones that will be going in the first round when they're seniors, I'll bet you they got 20 guys that'll be first round draft picks. Yeah, could well You be. think about it. The thing about Devontae Smith, uh, oh. I mean, he does everything right. He's got the speed. The most important thing a receiver Boy, not a, should not a have big, not a big is, guy. is creating separation. He looks like a sophomore at BFA. Yeah. I mean, his body is so slight, but yeah. I, would, I would draft him if I had, had the 200 chance. 200 and. Uh, 220 something yards in one half. Yeah. I think the yeah. pa- Patriots could probably find a spot for him. Yeah. And they weren't playing, they weren't playing uh, Navy. They were playing Ohio State. Ohio, Ohio State, State would beat up on Clemson. Clemson. Clemson's a pretty decent team. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, no, Alabama Bama, is. Bama is uh, unreal. I, I don't like Nick Saban that much myself. Yeah. But you got to you gotta tip your cap. Yeah. To to uh, what a six national championship with Alabama and he got one what at LSU too yeah I, I could, part of my bitterness about him was when he was with the Dolphins and denying you know when the rumors hey hey coach we hear you going to I'm not going to Alabama I, that that still taints a little Duke, bit but uh, I remember that well he denied it yeah, on Tuesday absolutely. in Miami Wednesday next day in Tuscaloosa Tuscaloosa doing a press conference. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that gets me upset. But uh, oh, no, I have those guys are all guy. about themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And Urban Meyer, of course, is very hardly kicking the tires with the Jacksonville Jags. And, of course, um, he wants to be the coach and the general manager, complete um, power with the Jaguars. And he, he wants $12 million. That I'm not sure if that would really? make him the highest paid. Does it sound like it will happen or not, I not think clear? I think it will happen. Yeah. yeah, and to me, Duke, these coaches are so grossly underpaid. Okay. Uh, just say he did get seven or twelve million dollars. Yeah. You look at a twelve million dollar ball player; um, it's like a guy like Blake Martinez on the Giants. Well, if a football player is putting God. sixty hours a week of work in, the coach is putting a hundred hours. Oh a week. God, they yeah. work like dogs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, like Matt Rule. Uh, the head coach of the Carolina Panthers was the guy we all knew was going to coach the New York Giants. The Panthers gave him a ridiculous, like, a seven-year, seven year, eight million really? dollars a year for really? a guy with no NFL coaching really? experience. And smart guy, and I, I like Matt Rule a lot. He said, I'll take the deal. And then some guy from the Patriots, and I will admit, it was January 8th of last year, they, they signed up Joe Judge. Um, I might have heard the name before, but, right. you know, I think we're happy. Yeah. Well, to get an idea of the difference in money, the assistant coach that the Giants had, I think he was a linebacker coach or something, who left to go to become head coach at Indiana or Illinois. He went from 400000 bucks a year to $4 million. Is that Is that right? Yeah. And, uh, so these assistant coaches, not know where we're talking a million, just... Now, what the Giants did is they just stepped up big time and paid this Graham. I'm oh. sure he's getting a couple million bucks yeah. a year. No, Patrick, right? Patrick Graham. Oh, yeah. And I think he wants another year or two of seasoning, and then he'll oh. probably go somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So... Because oh. so a lot of times, these hot shot coordinators, they don't all pan out. Remember when? Uh, well, look at even the Pats. Look at McDaniel's. I mean, how well, how did he fare in Denver? Not well at all. How about uh, Matt Patricia? 
Right. Who was a defensive guy. Uh, yeah, and, didn't uh, fare well. No, there's been a lot of Patriots guys that haven't really panned Although out. Although lately they seem to be uh, Flores and the aforementioned Joe Judge lately. Pat's assistants seem to be doing better. The uh, Oh, who's the guy I'm thinking of? Spagnola. He, he was hot. And he went, where'd he go, St. Louis? Or not St. Louis? St. Louis Rams. Huh. And uh, Steve Spagnola might have been my all-time favorite uh, coordinator. Yeah, he really. did a Players job. loved him, worked, played hard for him, huh. and I thought he was going to be very successful with the Rams and huh. didn't work I'm out. I'm surprised the Giants didn't um, give him a – remember he was their temporary assistant coach or temporary head coach after they fired uh, the guy with the hair. What was his name? Uh Jeez, we hardly knew you. <laughs> McAdoo. Oh, oh, Ben McAdoo. Yeah. yeah, Ben McAdoo. And Ben McAdoo was a offensive whiz, offensive coordinator of the Packers. We took him, and the reason we signed Coughlin is because we were afraid we were going to let McAdoo sign oh, yeah. with another team. And God, terrible. Just that brings ter- back terrible. a bad Red Sox memory when – Butch Hobson, a great player, just talk about another dirt dog kind of guy, but they were kind of grooming Butch and they yes. were afraid somebody else was going to grab him. So named a manager and he did not did not fare well or last long as manager. I think they fired Tom Coughlin too quick. Oh, I agreed. Absolutely. Agreed. He was the last year he coached, I think, was one of his best coaching jobs because yep. they had yeah. nothing. Yeah. They uh, <clears throat> if they'd have gotten rid of Odell Beckham. He's been a cancer. You notice how much better Cleveland is without is, o- is Odell injured? He's not even playing. Is yeah, he ACL. He's injured. David, or Duke, David is right. I mean, you, you look at the um, uh, the way the Browns have jettisoned. Is that the right term? Just as in gone. They've gone crazy since Beckham got injured. Yeah. Uh, that's called my favorite saying, addition by subtraction. Yes. Yeah. And the Browns are playing great right now. Boy, I'd be I'd be a little concerned about the uh, the Browns opponent. The Brown, yeah, I think the Browns are. Didn't we? Had, I, weren't you guys disagreeing with me a few weeks ago? When I was talking Stefanski. Is that his name? The guy yeah, he's a good coach. As the head coach, I mean, the we'll get you know. Who do the Browns the, play? They the play the Bills coach. this week. No, the the Browns have um, the Cam- Browns Kansas have City. Kansas City. Okay. In the early game, the afternoon game Sunday, boy, I'm telling you, if that that's a game, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be stunned. Kansas City has not exactly been killing people. Well, I just have. You think a they'll funny get it get it together City. when they need to? Yeah. Yeah. But and the Bills are playing game. Baltimore. That'll, Bills, that's, that's probably the be a marquee. Good game. That's maybe the marquee yeah. game. So the four games Saturday, four thirty. Rams playing Green Bay. Yeah. Packers giving six and a half points. And let me say this about the Ram game. I enjoyed that game more than any game just because that looked like 1960s. Right, the Ram, Rams Don't you Seattle game. Pat Carroll or a Pete Carroll yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. You you really want to you really want to rub his nose yeah. right in. Cam it. Akers yeah, ran Pete's the ball. Not my, my best friend. Super effectively. And Aaron Donald and the Rams defense yeah, played. Those guys it. are tough. And it was just 1960s football. The quarterback started John Wolford, who we've never heard of. Who quickly gets injured. Gets a serious neck injury uh, right off the get-go. They put uh, uh, Jared Goff, Goff comes right in. broken thumb in. He, base, he, he had no velocity on the ball, but played well enough. Yeah. And like I said, Akers just ring wild. Of course, Seattle. Seattle's just kind of fading And it was funny, away. too, because they've played great ever since they lost that game a month and a half ago to the uh, Giants. Mm-hmm. And I thought Seattle might have had a chance to, to win the conference. Pete, Pete Carroll's in no, no trouble in no. Seattle, is he? Yeah. No. no. So, what are we talking, though? Seven, are we up to seven NFL vacant coaching vacancies yeah. now? Yeah. There are a bunch. And our buddy Peterson. I think he'd had it. See, I got a feeling that they told him to tank. Oh, absolutely. And I think I don't think he. I think he said, "I've had enough of your." Crap. Just took. Is that right? Interesting. As the owner of the team, uh, we what they always say: philosophical differences. <laughs> I love oh, that. Oh, there's no way Peterson uh, made that decision to put Sudfeld in there. Yeah. That that came from top. Huh. And again, I I don't blame the strategy. They mm-hmm. moved up three spots. My biggest blame was you've got to 
act well. You've, you, it can't be. And so just obvious. don't make it so obvious. Oh, it was blatant. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But no, I think we got a good, good, good weekend of uh, ball yeah, games. So yeah. So second game Saturday, Duke is a uh, Baltimore is getting two and a half from Buffalo. Well, I'd say that might be the marquee yeah. game of the. And four. that's 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 a good game. In Buffalo, uh, as I said, Kansas City is on first game. Sunday, 3 o'clock, Kansas City giving Cleveland 10 in the 640 game. Uh, Tampa is getting 3.5 from New Orleans. And, of course, Mr. Brady is still. <laughs> he well, off and plus we had the old uh, New Orleans has beaten Tampa yeah. twice. They killed him at least one of those games. But Boy, David, can they beat? Can they beat Brady three times? It's hard that's, beating that's, a team yeah. three times. Boy. I know Brady's 43, and now that you're up there, plays years, like he's about 30. So you go back 20 some odd years ago, David. If you kept yourself in shape, and Tom Brady works at it, okay, oh, absolutely. give him credit. I mean, the, the oh, nutrition sorry. personal sorry. trainer works that every day. There, there, there's a reason why he's still great. Uh, yeah, so much for the folks who are questioning, you know, Max Kell, how many years has Max Kellerman been saying uh, Brady's just, just about had it? I'd love to be hearing Max after this season of Brady. Brady Brady's Brady unreal. looked good. Brady, there's yeah. – you know the guy, and I'll, and I'll be the first guy to admit it, that I didn't think much of him. But this year, he, and I've watched a few of his games because he – that Lamar Jackson – that guy, pretty tough. That guy. guy is what you call an X factor. Yeah, he's a gamer. He's a pretty gamer guy. My God, uh, he doesn't just scramble. He's no. the fastest guy on the no. field. No, I mean he, that's what fifty-yard touchdown run, the oh, key play. What man. a what a what a play! Dude, you're right. He's tough. He's not a quarterback. It's he's tough. a football player, and tough. he doesn't mind taking the hits and giving them yeah. himself. And you know what? He's become a better. Passer, he's not a great passer, yeah. but he puts a ball where it belongs. Yeah. No, I, uh, I think that I, I think that's I give him a, a lot of game. respect, and that's that all he has to be. Game. If he can be an average passer yeah. with his running ability, yeah. um, it's just football so different now. Third and five, when you got guys like Jackson and hopefully our quarterback yeah. uh, Daniel Jones, when healthy, will be that same. Yeah, type. that just adds so much when a quarterback can can just. Oh. Make but geez, uh, he had a couple of runs, and, uh, and, and Tennessee's a pretty good team. 136 yards, 136 well, yards rushing yeah. and 200 plus passing. Not a bad game. No, he's he's good. Uh, I didn't think he was. He didn't look. He's matured. That's how what I would say. He. Um, I know they blew a lot of smoke up his butt for running out of for staying in bounds on one of those runs late in the game, but you know what? He's thinking he. Because I always thought last year that he looked like he wasn't mature, but he's turned into a quarterback. Yeah, I give him I give him all the credit in the world. Yeah. He's good. I he's think really I saw the good. stat. Harbaugh that was Harbaugh's eighth playoff win on the road, most of any NFL coach. I think I saw that stat. He's a good coach at Harbaugh. Baltimore is tough. I mean, there's a team that always give the Patriots problems. That's a that that should be a fun yeah. fun game. Yeah. I just think that when it all boils. Hey, down. we got a call. Oh. Good evening. You're on the best damn sports show in Franklin County. Hello. Hi, guys. How are we doing tonight? Hey. We're good. How are you? Fine, fine. Thank you. You know, one thing that I read about the other day has been in the news, uh, I think pretty big for football, is the, uh, maybe you guys mentioned it earlier, but the ordeal in Texas with Watson. Yeah, we haven't we haven't talked about that. Yeah, it's inter interesting. Boy, and that's a wound that will not heal. I mean, I, I Watson will be wearing another uniform. It sounds, uh, sounds like it. I look at his stats. He's the number four overall quarterback this year, too, behind Mahomes, uh, Rogers, and somebody else. And didn't he have Hopkins to throw to last year? Well, Hopkins got traded to the right to Arizona, but right. I mean he's doing this after losing Hopkins. Yeah, um, he's a darn darn good quarterback, and yeah. um, he just signed a gigantic um, yeah. contract this past season. Uh, you know, I, I think you know Houston. Maybe they want to get out of that contract or whatever, but um, he certainly will make a good quarterback for somebody. Well. There's rumors he could be headed to Miami because Miami has a boatload of great draft picks. Um, it's going to take a, a number of picks, but uh, they'll 
Texans will get Tua and uh, and maybe two additional first round picks huh. and second and third. So that could happen. Yeah, I agree. I I, I believe Watson does not want to go back I, to. So what, what was his what was his well, beef? I didn't really get into was, that. They picked a general manager without consulting with him. And I'm he scratching my to be, head. You're supposed to it's, consult your right. quarterback? So. Huh. Well, isn't there a lot of uh, angst, though, in Houston? There, everybody seems like they're just in complete disarray. It's a yeah. hor- horrible football team. Yeah. Was you know, great- in today's sport world, a lot of times um, you have the tail wagging the dog. Yep. And I think this perhaps could be the case here. But, uh, you know, he's a great quarterback. And, uh, you know, if he's not going to be happy there, you know, they certainly will. And fo- football never used to be a big trading sport. You know, usually you're on the team and, you know, 95% of the players stayed on that team until, you know, they were got old. But, I mean, there's a lot of wheeling and dealing today more so than ever in every sport. So uh, I expect Watson to to move. And, Duke, wouldn't you like to see him in a Patriot uniform? I almost said, hey, if he ends up in Fox Pro, sure. I mean, after after this this season, uh, sure. I just I guess money's uh, the thing. I'm just wondering if the Pats would throw out just big buckos and stuff. But sure, I'd be I'd be very happy to see him in Fox Pro. Yeah. Yeah. He he's worth the money. Some quarterbacks are not, but I think Watson is up. Uh, you know, worth the money he can throw, he can run. Um, you know, the guy's a winner. And you don't mind paying big money for a big performance. Um, you know, I, I like the guy. I've watched him play quite a bit. And, uh, you know, he certainly will be an asset for any team that he does go to. Yeah, of course, the Clemson of- boy had a, had a great who, – who could forget the last second play to, what, beat Alabama for the national championship. A great career at Clemson. And the running back for that team was – New York Giant running back Wayne, Wayne Gallman. Gallman. Oh, oh, is yeah. that right? No, yeah. I forgot now, that. Now, the thing about the Patriots, huh. they have a boatload of money to spend this year. Uh, but the problem, too, this year is the salary cap for 2020 was $198 million. With the lack of fans, uh, that's going to drop down to $175 million really? for next season. Huh. Now, as far as Watson's concerned, definitely a top five quarterback in football. But that team is so horrid. Okay, it's just wasting him on Houston. Yeah. There, the, whatever he does, there's just not enough talent there to make it to the playoffs. Yeah. So it would behoove them to send him to Miami or New England, wherever, yep. and just garner a bunch of picks and just admit it that uh, we we we've, we've got to start from scratch. If for chance he makes it to a New England Foxborough, it sounds like he will not be throwing to Mr. Edelman. I didn't see the exact words, but I guess Jules came out with a tweet or whatever today and sure made it sound like he wasn't going back to uh, Foxborough. Yeah. Of course, yeah, not, that's not, the not exactly. I got guy. to I yeah. read the same thing. Yeah. Um so, Nighthawk and um, Dave, you guys must be pretty happy with the Giants' performance this year. Though, I mean, um, with one of the league's number one running backs out for the season, I mean, they still played very well. I love their defense, and of course, the quarterback was injured a bit, but I, I think he will have a bright future. So, uh, you know, you guys must be somewhat pumped for next year when you start up again. I think there's enough talent there where they can reverse their 6 and 10 record and go 10 and 6 next year and there's a ton of doubters Daniel Jones doubters uh, but I still have seen enough in him and he uh, had much less fumbles this year and his new element of running this year was a complete surprise to all of us how fast he is and he's 6 feet 5 inches I mean he he can take a tackle um and like you said, Collar, Barkley's back next year. We definitely need a wide receiver, whether we go out and get Kenny uh, Galladay from the Lions or Allen Robinson from the Bears. We need a big, wide receiver. Mm. Um, that so Juju Smith is available, too, yeah, I think. Uh, ju- yeah, uh, from the Steelers. There's a Steelers, lot of good yeah. ones. There's, a, there's talk that there was one from Carolina that Gettleman drafted. 
Oh, who's a free agent and really had a breakout year okay. this year? Yes, too. like was that DJ Clark? I, I'm trying to remember. Then you got Corey Davis from Tennessee. Uh, so the Giants need a wide receiver. They have the 11th pick overall. Uh, the top three receivers: uh, Devontae Smith, uh, uh, the kid from LSU. Uh, Ch- that's who Lamar. that's who I think I saw in the mock draft going yeah. to you guys, a kid from LSU. Yeah. Uh Lamarcus Chase, well boy, my mind and Yes, course, I do believe that's the yeah. name. And the other guy who came in injured, uh uh Waddle. Jalen Waddle. Um caller, I the other the other thing that I think about the Giants this year, for the first time in God knows how long you feel better about them at the end of the year mm-hmm. than you do about the beginning. Because for the last few years, they've been pathetic. They couldn't run. They couldn't stop the run. Now, now they've got a, they've got a stout defense, and they only need tweaking. They don't need, mm-hmm. they don't need everything from the foundation up. Which, no, you're exactly right. Yep. So, and I wasn't critical on them this year because I was just looking for improvement. We got that. However, at some point you have to win games, and they lost a plethora of games, uh, just three points, two points. Well, and that goes again when you lose Barkley. The Heats were seven points a game at least, plus. Um, you know, this guy moves the chains, yeah. and he definitely is. Daniel Jones' best friend on the field, you know? Um, It's just hard to lose arguably one of the top three running backs in the game and perform well all year. So, you know, I I think next year, um, and especially in your division, um, you know, you guys should do very well. I know you're a Rams fan. Uh, We will be playing the Rams in Jersey next season, so... If you're interested in going, give me a call. Well, we'll see how this COVID is. Yeah. Oh, by uh, the way, I just want to let you guys know, Duke, you gave me a cruising article from the Wall Street Journal, yeah. I believe. I got an email yesterday. Let me guess. And no go. my lovely wife and I, after tax season, we, we like to get out of the house. Yeah. That way our home isn't our office anymore. Yeah. And so we had a nice trip planned. <clears throat> To head to Europe out of Fort Lauderdale and up in Amsterdam. Get an email yesterday. Gone. Canceled. Oh, are they, so. what, what, how, how late are they? Did they give a date? What's their next date that they're supposed to? May. Is that at right? At this point. Boy. And this COVID. And, and again, I will never sit here and act like I know what I'm talking about. I don't know. And that's just the thing. And we talked about the Celtics earlier. Uh, Oh, boy, Hawk, sorry to hear that. I'm yeah. still, I was thinking of my April trip. I think I'm going to go. I mean, hey, by myself uh, on a beach and stuff, even if RBC doesn't have fans, not unknown. And I called the tennis tourney. The box office was closed. I'll call them tomorrow in Charleston. But the box office is open, but I'll be yeah. interested to see. My guess is they haven't made a decision on fans, but I'm still tempted to get out of here. But sorry, Hawk, I know that yeah. cruises well, I, I are your I feel bad line. for my wife because I, no. I, you know, my rebound, is okay. At least he can start uh, playing golf at that point. I'll go golfing instead. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, she looks so forward to this. So. Well, hopefully, hopefully, obviously, later in the year. Yeah, Jennifer, I think her, I think she had one scheduled for spring that's gone, I think, too. So. Okay, I'll let you guys go. Great show as usual. And uh, good night. Yo, thanks, good hey, good, hey, luck. good luck thanks this weekend. Us. Yeah, good luck to your Rams. Great effort last weekend. Boy, what happened to Pittsburgh? Boy, did they go in a tank the last few weeks. Well, I mean, 11 and no start. Reminds me of last, remember, the Patriots got off to an 8 and no start two seasons ago. There was actually some loose talk, undefeated team. I'm going, please, give me a break. But, uh, boy, the Steelers really did fall apart big time. Roethlisberger looked terrible the first half. He was yeah. just awful. Yeah. That Manners. first that first what about snap. The first, what about the first snap? You know, Great you way to start the game. You've you got to fall on that. Yeah, I wasn't impressed that they, they should have at least covered it on about the one or so. Yeah, no, I, uh, I'll i tell you what, Pittsburgh, I think Roethlisberger, I think that's it for him. He, he, you remember, he was in the same draft class as Eli Manning. Yeah, and of uh, course, Phillip Rivers Huh. And Philip Rivers went to the Colts this Phillip year. Philip was same was same class. Yeah, yeah. In right? fact, wow. uh, 
the Giants had drafted him first and the, then huh. traded him. Absolutely. And two first oh, yeah. round right. If, if, huh. Eli Manning was the first overall pick by the San Diego Chargers. Huh. Giants had the fifth pick, and that's when the phone calls really got heated. Wow. And we, we finally ironed out a deal, and we said to the Chargers, who, who do you want for a quarterback? And it was uh, Phillip Rivers and Big Ben were the other huh. part of the big three. And the Chargers said, well, pick Rivers for us. And then they consummated the trade. Huh. And I think it was George Young. It was a Corsi. It was Ernie a Corsi, thanks. Uh, huh. Said if that deal did not transpire, they would have taken Big Ben. Huh, really? Where did he play? Louisville? Jeez, I, I, I think it was a, no. I can't. I thought I it was out of Louisville. Louisville. Ask your, tw- <laughs> ask your I can't, tweet machine. I can't tell. Siri, what Le- college Le- did Ben Roethlisberger play Lamar Jackson's for? out of Louisville. I, I forget about Ben. M- Miami. Oh, of really? Ohio. Of Ohio. Oh, boy. Wow. Not exactly. Uh, you got me on that one. Huh. So, no, I'll tell you how yes, pathetic yeah. my life is. Not only did I watch every <laughs> minute, it was four hours a day. <laughs> um, so that was that was good. I watched all six football games to boot. Huh. So I was kind of sported out by su- Sunday night. Huh. Well, the uh, Buffalo's good. This is really, though I'll tell you what, I think this extra week off for Kansas City with their speed, they're going to... They're going to be a real tough matchup yeah. for Cleveland. Kansas City is just too fast. Yeah. They have skill at every position, and those wide receivers, that Tyreek Hill, yeah. you can't cover them. But again, they haven't been they haven't been killing people. They've had a had a bunch of close, even come from behind games. They remind me of, and I'm showing my age, the 1968 <laughs> Green Bay Packers. Um, who 67 they won, and then in 68 they didn't do too well, but they ended up finally winning. Remember, they uh, they came on the last few weeks, and they ended up winning the Super Bowl. They beat the Raiders. Yep, the huh. Packers won the first two Super Bowls. And, and of course, uh, the Super Bowl, the first one was called the uh, AFL-NFL Championship. championship. That, was the, that was the and official name. And the second name. one was called the Super Bowl, and that was named by the owner of the Kansas City Chiefs, called it the Super Bowl, because his daughter played with the Super Ball. Do you remember those balls, David? Yes, I do. Oh, is that right? Yeah. So the kid would play with the Super Ball. That's a great and, story. And the father, Super Ball, Super Ball, Super Bowl. Really? Now, if you watch the uh, film of the first Super Bowl, it was at the L.A. Coliseum. It's half full. Half full. Absolutely. Is that, is that right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. God, who could forget the ball games there when they had when the Dodgers? Remember, left field was about two fifty. Yeah. Remember, it's the ball games at the L.A. Coliseum. Yeah. Yeah. Joe Namath really made the Super Bowl. Yeah. The third one. You know, it's funny. I remember that game like it was oh, yesterday. Do you? Do you really? Absolutely. I wow. do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Duke. Before we go on, and you kind of let the cat out of the bag. I t- talked with you and David out in the parking lot about the messenger and of course you know my feelings is in fact they have the messenger it, it, I was about it, to bring that really up gone downhill. we did talk about that right we, we didn't, didn't, hadn't didn't, talked about it but I thought I, I thought I had mentioned on air that they were going to go down to two days you, a week you told us out in the parking lot oh is that in the parking yeah, lot but uh, Michelle Monroe left a month and a half ago Michelle was my source of info and told me that. I had the utmost respect for I don't Great know what job. happened there and of course uh, the, the day the new owner buys the messenger, he gives the Duke a call. God, imagine, imagine that. What a key part of the, the paper Duke that was. Duke would write an article <laughs> once a week. And granted, we're friends, but I think I can separate the friendship. And I would tell Duke, you know, three out of the four articles a month I like, they might be one I didn't particularly care for. And he's very understandable. He can't please him all the time. But the Duke's a not a good writer or great writer. I enjoyed his stuff, and bang, right off the get-go. So now they're hockey more than kind. Hey, easy way truth. to save a few bucks. Oh. But this is this is tough. Now they're going to two days a week, yeah. telling you you're going to get more for less. We're going to get more staff and all these great 
new articles. So I'm thinking to myself, well, to why, tell the you hell, what they say? Well, why the hell don't you give the Duke a call and say, Duke, we made a tragic mistake. You, you know, you've been a journalist here in Franklin County for 40 plus years. Hawk, Please Hawk, come back. You're very kind. Get get real. You, you don't have much of a feel for the world of journalism. <laughs> You're not looking down. But thanks. Your words are about me are always way too kind. So, but hey, it's going the other way. Duke, the question Look I have at Michelle. For you. I mean, I talked to Michelle Monroe. As you said, I, I mentioned in, on the on the St. Albans show last time we talked about Michelle a little bit with Mayor Tim Smith and Brendan Diso. But Michelle and I called her a couple of weeks ago and just said, hey, great, great job. Uh, um, but again, she when at the time I talked to her a few weeks ago, she was in New York with her dealing with her ailing parents, was still looking for a journalism job. Mm -hmm. I mean, that says it all. If Michelle Monroe, who is a regular on Vermont This Week, the long-running PBS show, I mean, very, very solid. I mean, boy, if she's having trouble getting a job, that says it all about yeah. the state of yeah. journalism. Well, one thing I did not see in that article was, uh -huh. hey, you know, we're going down to two days a week. And you're paying for five days a week, so we're going to cut your subscription in half. Actually, for the record, they've been down to four days a week. And they, you know, it's just a weekend edition comes out on Thursday. So, in fact, we're talking four. Isn't that, isn't that correct? Mm, no, I don't believe so. I know well, the, I during the know. holidays that might have occurred. You know, this reminds me of, mm. and I don't know how, how well Emerson and Cindy, and not, not Cindy. <laughs> that was his first one. <laughs> yeah. Suzanne, I don't know, Suzanne, uh, Suzanne, Suzanne, I don't know how much money they were making, if they were making money, only God knows. But I can tell you the messenger for the last 25 years was doing fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, and mm -hmm. I would I was still getting it, even though my kids were out of high school. I liked reading about the Bob Whites and the Comets and sure. all that stuff. And I'd even mm -hmm. read about uh, Mrs. Goy and I think of uh you know, uh, all the local athletes, and they had enough stuff, and they had Richard, and he, there was, it was... It, hey, for a daily paper in a small place? Yeah, whatever again, they were doing, they, they whatever did pretty, they were doing, pretty good job. it was working. Yeah. Now, I understand that uh, advertising revenue isn't what it used to be oh, God. In, uh, mm -hmm. in newspapers, because everybody, they're, they're putting their ads somewhere else, but... This guy here, when they took over, he took, unless they were losing their shirt, he should have just left it the way that it was. Because now, it won't be long, it'll be all gone. No, nobody's going to read the messenger. And of course, the week. weekly paper is the Milton Independent, which I would, I'm in Milton usually a couple of days uh, a week. They, they're going digital. That, that print, Milton yeah. into the weekly. The, uh, I think the best paper around here is probably the Courier. Courier looks like it's uh, got I, some life to it. I subscribe from the Courier, and I've tried to tell my wife, get rid of the messenger, yeah. but she likes the obituaries. For the, whatever uh, reason. But the, I, cur the Courier hit so bits. Uh, oh, they my do good a great job. Neville. The Anna loves a the yeah. the only, but, I, um, but I told my wife, if she happens to die before me, <laughs> first thing I'm going to do is call the messenger office and <laughs> drop my And I still have my... Uh, do you get the messenger? No. No. Uh, I, I, still, still, I still get him. I still have a subscription to the free press, a digital... That's funny you I mentioned free press. free press. I thought so. the free press was gone from my life. I had tried the Sunday. I got a good deal on the Sunday paper. I think three bucks a month or something just for the Sunday print paper. But I wasn't getting it. Every other, every third week it wouldn't be delivered. So I called up and said, forget it. I used to write for you guys for 20 years. Forget it. Only to run into an ad about 10 days ago um, when I was checking my emails for a change. 13, 13 bucks a month every day print for a year. I mean, usually that's three months. I wouldn't have even thought about it for three months. Okay, one more time. So guess who's getting the, uh, the well, free the press only every day I now? Well, the I get it is for the obituaries <laughs> and the crossword puzzle and the Sudoku huh. and the jumble. Hmm. And I print those out every morning. Yeah. But if it wasn't for that, their articles, their articles are crap. Now, you want to, I think, I think the world's best newspaper right now is the New York Post. I, is, I'm sorry, the one? New York Post. Yeah. Oh, the Post. They are, their sports are good. Yep. There you go. But their, uh, their other articles, they, they tend to be a little right of center, but they weren't syncopants for Trump. 
I remember reading uh, fact, an editorial. One of, their, one of their big Trump people, Mr. Goodwin, I think. Yeah, how to say, hey, go away, Don. Went, went crazy about Trump, but no, it tends to be tends to be pro Republican, pro Trump. They're more they're more that way than, but they have articles in there that are really good. And of course, they broke the story, which now looks like it's got some legs to it. The Hunter Biden. The Hunter Biden story, which. Uh, Mainstream media, which conservatives are quick to note, pretty much ignored for Completely. a while. Yeah. And I find now, the it. The Post has some, like, of course, page yeah. six are famous. Yep. Page well, six they which, got just enough sleeves which, to which make it worth usually a while. On page yeah. six. In fact, I showed that to my kid today. I pick up the Post usually once or twice a week, but uh, my kid has paid a lot of attention to Kanye West and his very impressive presidential bid. And page <laughs> six had a thing that Kanye's presidential bid, he can probably say goodbye to his lovely wife, Miss Kardashian, who's, I guess, had it with Kanye. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> no, uh, the uh, New York Post, they're okay. Uh. No, it's got some life to it. I think like, I think that's, that's but for okay. good papers, the one paper I get these days every day is Wall Street Journal. I mean, very solid paper, very conservative. Now, is that still owned by uh, no, it's Rupert owned by, Murdoch? No, absolutely, very conservative editorial page, but just a lot of a lot of good stuff. Wall Street Journal is still a very solid paper. So, Duke, turning yeah. our attention over to the baseball diamond, your good friend Andrew Benintendi from my sources yeah. will not be a Red Sox by this weekend. Right. Really? Where's he gone? Um, so we're talking trade, trading him? The Marlins might be interested in him. You know what, Duke? Um, is JB, is there a chance JBJ comes back? Nobody's grabbed, of course, JBJ uh, yet, right? JBJ. Supposedly the Red Sox are the, interested in keeping him. Uh, the Mets are in, interested in Jackie Bradley. Really? Now, when they tell you that Ben Attendee had a horrible year in 2020. Oh, Duke, hit about one under one nine. 103. Hit, 103. Duke, he had 39 oh. at bats. Right. So you don't even count that. But he uh, still ben looked. Attendee he still two, looked. He still looked like he had totally lost yeah. it. He's a 273 lifetime hitter with a great on base percentage of 353. Huh. I mean, I told you before, I like him. He's not a star, but he's a good. But Huck, but the trend is very bad. He, His rookie year, I mean, he looked like he was going to be a pretty big star. He, Went 20 and 90 his rookie year. His last full season was, he definitely went down, just second, like you say. Injuries or, uh, second year, he no, went it just seemed that he just seemed to go down. 16 and 87 his second year. Yeah. 19, he went 13 and 68. He did trend yeah. down. And then at the start of last season, I realized he just had a few at-bats, but I'm watching this guy in the early games. Swing at stuff in the dirt. I mean, it looked like he yeah. was a, a a little leaguer who was just in a, in a big. And I like the guy. It looked like he had just totally lost. Can't it be high. any worse than Sanchez was. Yeah. yeah. He, but he he was he was horrible. So the Red Sox, if that comes to fruition, which I expect it will, huh. will obviously have to pick up an outfielder. Are they getting? Are the Red Sox getting I, something? I haven't heard rumors. Is you know there has been some action just to David, huh. uh, DJ Lemayhu. Uh, he wants. Four years, minimum $110 million. And the word out the other day is he told his agent, start shopping me. Uh, so what, what are you hearing from the Yankees? Will the well, Yanks not pay him that? What the Yankees have told him and what they've told everybody, and of course I'm, I've got no more uh, pipeline to the general manager than anybody else, yeah. is uh, we want you, you go shop around, you go get with your numbers. Huh. When you get them, talk to us. Give us a last shot, and huh. if they aren't stupid, we'll do it. Huh. Okay. And so what it's done is the Yankees haven't signed anybody. Right. Supposedly they've got thirty-five million bucks to spend. Huh. They spend twenty-five million on Lemayhu. That leaves them ten million for everybody else. Huh. I don't know. I don't really like the the makeup of their team. I I don't like pitching, the way they I mean, strike pit, out. Pitching's what they really need, isn't it? They need everything. Yeah. Yeah. And their fielding's not that good either. Yeah. Um, huh. They they got the same trouble. Well, the, uh, I can uh -huh. tell you, my team, the Nationals, we signed, and the Yankees. No, you just grabbed somebody, Kyle right? Kyle Schwarber. Oh. Yeah, for one year, ten million. Right? Yeah, the Yankees wow. were very interested in him. Boy, I would have killed Below for that. Average. Outfielder, but he has worked at it. Nice guy, so he'll huh. be manning down left field. Huh. Uh, but 
very few free agents have signed. The big trade to the Mets was Lindor. Mr. Lindor. And Carrasco. Yeah. Yeah. And Carrasco. Speaking but the, the thing is, and this is reminiscent of the Mookie Betts trade, Lindor's a free agent after the season. Here's uh, speaking of the New York Post. This is on the, the Post oh, sports page. Lindor opened a Mets extension, but wants it prior to start of the season. Big headline, short notice. So, and the, the Mets picked up, or the Indians picked up the men's starting shortstop, Ahmed uh, Rosario, who's a yeah. really nice player. They yeah. get, and they also got three top-notch prospects. Yeah. So, you know, it, it looks good on paper, but when you look at the contract situation, Carlos Carrasco, who's been a really nice pitcher for the Indians over the last 10 years, uh, has got two more years. I think he gets $17.5 million a season. Uh, I mean, the Mets are loading up right now. Yeah, the now. Mets look like they're trying to I get pretty uh, serious. Oh, let me take that back. Carrasco was getting $12 million for this year and next year. Last season, for whatever it's worth, 2020, he had an ERA of 2.91. Carrasco was a – that was no throw-in. No. Carrasco, Cleveland was dumping. See, now, if these were normal times, the Yankees should have picked up Lindor. Then they could have moved – then they could have moved um, Torres back to second, where he belongs. He's not a he's not a shortstop. Too fat. And of course, they mentioned that the and and Cashman did too that Torres showed up to camp out of shape, and it showed all year. But I uh, I hate to say anything, but I huh. think a lot of these guys that come from the Dominican. When they get to the major leagues, they... They eat their way out of a job. They do. If you notice, a lot of them get fat. Yeah. Huh. And I think, hey, it's hard when you grew up with nothing, yep. and then all of a sudden you're getting, making major league money. Of course, Big Poppy being, of course, an exception. Remember how svelte he was in his, later in his career? I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> well, but Big Poppy always was big a Poppy big guy. Big Poppy did our kind, yeah. Of course, and then uh, once he got off the steroids. I'm sure we'll, I'm sure we'll, get the, we'll finally find <laughs> out what happened when he was almost killed. He, I'm sure I actually that story see. will be out any day now, right? If you ever yeah. check out Poppy when he played with the Twinkies, he was not a, a not a huge guy. Fellow. I mean, mm. he was as big as a steroid user as anybody. In oh, I'm sure of it. So, mm. David, explain this to me. You know, I'm not big on relief pitchers. Uh, the Australian Liam Hedricks from Oakland signs with the Chai Sox for four years, fifty-four million dollars. I mean, that's eighteen million dollars a season for a relief pitcher. He's considered the best. That he's reliever. considered the best relief pitcher in baseball. They were talking today that uh, White Sox are considered to be odds-on favorites now to win the American League. Yeah, right, really. But I, I don't know. Uh, huh. Of course, Tampa blew up their team. Mm-hmm. Yep. How yeah. do you get rid of Blake Snell? I mean, yeah, yeah right. I mean, the White Sox and uh, the Padres are the two. Cheek or ch whatever that is. Cheek. Cheek. What's the term? C H I C. We can Sheik. spell it, but Sheik. we can't say it. Cheek. Right. Cheek. Well, that's think. the cheek pick to, yes. to go with. But back to the Yankees, though. And I told you a month ago, you put Fatty Torres back at second base. And I've always liked Didi Gregorius. Not an all star, but a, just a very steady player. You probably get him for five, seven million dollars. I'll tell you what, I bet the Yankees wish they never signed Giancarlo Stanton. Yeah, probably so. Huh? There's 30 million bucks yeah. right there well, just hanging around. I uh, saw Dr. J. He's a night doctor. I saw him. Yeah. Uh, oh, you saw him prof professionally. Professionally. And people hate me when I go into their office because I yep, 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 yep. That's, that's I don't funny see you say that. I do just the same downstairs with Dr. Dow. And that's no offense to Dr. J. I've got a fairly serious uh, condition that the good Dr. Dow is dealing with. But his staff goes crazy. We can talk. Oh. We'll talk politics, sports, and yeah. they'll come in and say, Doc, uh, Doc, people are waiting for you. So I said, sorry, Doc, I'm out of here. But, yeah, I can understand that. Yes. Um. Uh, but he he he's absolutely against, and I agree with them. These thirty plus million dollar dollar ball players. Really? Um, I think the Red Sox did a great thing trading Mookie for a one season, which turned out to be a partial season. You got Alex Verdugo now for the next number of years, um, plus some prospects, and 
you're saving yourself probably $30 million. Red Sox, like the Yankees, also have $35 million to spend. It's January 13th right now. The question we have every week on the show is when they're going to start. Spending. You know who still beats, uh, now that you mentioned that, you know who still beats the Red Sox up big time over the Mookie Betts thing is the great Dan Shaughnessy. You ready for his reference? He just goes crazy with that. I'm going, Dan, yeah, lucky we're not spending your money, but he just still goes crazy about that trade, Hawk. Name me. I'm just trying to find his... Uh, I don't think two out of ten of the $30 million a year guys, regular players, not pitchers, ever pan out. Mm -hmm. You don't think... You don't think that the uh, I got the wrong week. Angels wouldn't be uh, glad to get rid of Albert Pujols? Yeah. Oh, that was probably one of the top three worst contract signings ever. St. Louis was so glad they didn't. Uh, how about uh, the second baseman? Uh, he's with the Mets now. He oh. just got suspended for steroids. Robbie again. Cano. Robbie Cano. The Yankees uh, offered him 180. He got <laughs> 240. Went to Seattle. Unreal. He's done nothing. Yeah. You're I think Cano, when he comes back next year, of course he loses his whole salary this year, and it does bite his contract. Is He's got two more years to go, David, at $24 million. What do you do with that guy? I mean, and uh, the Mets, yeah, they're, they're talking about possibly signing D.J. LeMahieu themselves. And Steve Cohen, the owner, who's worth, Net worth is fourteen point six billion dollars. Bought the Mets for two point four billion. Really nice guy. His nickname is Uncle Steve, <laughs> just because he's <laughs> such a nice guy. And he's brought the Mets out of hell, and they're a competitive ball club again. And well, the Mets plus maybe, he didn't maybe, lose any uh, money last year on the Mets. Like every no, all the other baseball teams. You take the Yankees and the Dodgers, they probably lost 150, 200 million bucks each. And the Mets maybe have maybe New York's team this year. But speaking of baseball, mean, meanwhile, I mean, geez, guys, it's mid-January. Ordinarily, in a normal year, Leonard would be telling us, say, hey, whatever, you know, another 30 days, 29 days, and, you know, seven hours left till the start of spring training. We're hitting, you know. I would, you know, we were hearing nothing, right? Commissioner Rob Manford came out yesterday and did say that spring training camps are opening on time. Really? We will have a 162 game schedule. Is that right? He said that? It, right. Yesterday, January 12th. But you can say that. And the Celtics probably thought they were going to play a full season right. as well. But he said spring training yeah. camps will open. Yeah. I mean, we're not talking too far in the future here. Five month. weeks? Yeah, no more pitchers than five weeks. It's Jan yeah. 13 today. Yeah. Hey, all they got to do is vaccinate their guys. They're all done. Then, it, then they don't have to worry about it. So, uh, because I'm sure you can find some vaccine somewhere. Yeah. There's, well, there's millions of doses of it that aren't distributed. Yeah, a lot of vaccines not What's getting into so arms. Long, the, the, the typical bureaucracy, uh, yeah, red sure. tape, the usual crap. They got in Israel. In Israel, they vaccinated they already, already like 25% of their population. Because <laughs> yeah, right. I know Vermont, 6%. No, it's not 6 That sounds, that sounds high remember. to me. But they said Vermont yeah. per capita is, is better, is up there. Is right. But, but other issues have come up. I mean, you need two doses of the vaccine. So now you're running into, did, did New York, did Cuomo just change? Again, there, you know, well, they, I ideally you get your second dose within the, you get the second one three or four weeks after the first one. But now some folks are saying, no, let's try to just get everybody, give everybody one get dose. Everybody and, and one get everybody one dose. So you're there. running into issues like that. Now, Duke, you're an elderly folk. Have well, I you guess. been notified? Not to be more elderly even. What's that? Uh, have you been notified to get your shot? Uh, certain, no, are you kidding me? No, no way. I mean, the first phase in Vermont's 70, I'm as old as I am. I'm not 75. So 75. 75 and up will okay. be a earlier phase, okay. not to mention medical people. So no, I'm maybe I'm like phase two if I'm lucky or something. No, I've got got no, no phone calls about when to come down and get my vaccine. And where would here in St. Albans, where would you get your shot? I think that remains to be seen. I mean, well, you get like tests. our flu shot, the flu shot, um, the insurance company pays for it, so they 
I got we, my uh, flu. I got my flu shot at Hannaford, but I don't think that's clear. The testing, if you want to get testing, Department of Health, Kinney's doing testing now. Now, did you get a COVID test? I've had a couple. I just got one at Kinney's the other day. No, it was pretty easy to deal with. David, the drive-through. I'm. It was a drive-through window at Kinney's. And That's how right. long did that take? Oh, just, you know, five, ten, minutes. five ten minutes. <laughs> Self-administered, but Is that I, I, watched, I actually watched the video. Nose? Yeah. How far up you know if you have to the, go? The, the recommendation is a, a half inch for 10 to 15 seconds, just kind of moving it. makes your eyes water. Both, both nostrils. Okay. And you're, you're good? Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. My... Uh, I know this isn't the COVID central station. Oh, in but fact, yeah. Thanks to Donna for punching up some of the paperwork for that. Uh, my, uh, my boy, who's a PhD in Texas, well, is saying that from what he's read, that this asymptomatic, uh, worrying about people that are asymptomatic, if you got, it's like one in 20,000 asymptomatic people give it to somebody else oh, if you aren't sneezing if you aren't coughing if you don't have a runny nose if you don't have a fever right. you can't give it to somebody else right. so basically what they're telling it if you're sick stay home if you got something stay home but if you don't have it if you're yeah. perfectly healthy yeah. you can't give somebody something that and if that's how bad it is if you think about it if you're so sick that you've got absolutely no symptoms of anything and you give somebody that disease, that ain't all that bad. Because that's as sick as you get, that's nothing. So it's, because uh, I, I, I'll be anxious to see, to read about this five years, 10 years from now, and see what in the hell the scoop really is. Because what really stinks, the worst thing about this whole thing is the fact that you've got older folks that get it and they're susceptible to it. And then worse than that, if they get sick and die, and, and people die all the time, you can't have a funeral, you can't have a wake, yeah. you can't get together. They live like they, they live in solitary confinement. That's tough. That's the worst thing. Yeah. The, for the rest of us, I mean, hey, if we get it, we get it. And you know, you're sick and you, the death rate in the country is still almost exactly the same as it was. During but still, this is serious. I still hear, maybe you guys, I still hear some people minimizing this. I've heard, maybe not you, probably not you guys, but I've definitely heard some people when they're saying, hey, it's just not as big a deal as they're making it. It's no worse than the flu. I finally saw the stat for the flu. You want the stat for the flu? Oh, it's worse than the flu. How many, how many people do you think were killed by the flu last season? Uh, 50, 60,000. Not a bad guess. How about 22,000? Okay. And COVID's over 350. So don't, so people don't yeah, tell no, me it's, the, it's a bad just like the flu. It's a it's a terrible thing in that it affects the oldest people the worst. Yeah. You take all look at all these football players and baseball players and basketball players. They get it and they're back to playing baseball a week later. They aren't even you know, uh, as soon as they Although can, we did, they we did lose uh, incoming Republican congressman from Louisiana. Not uh, 41 died the other day of yeah. COVID, I guess. I'll tell you, though, last year when this occurred in March, um, I did not put a mask on. <clears throat> um, this year, the season starts next week. Um, and dealing with the clients, I will, for the record, be wearing a mask this year. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's I mean, not, a, not a bad are idea. Just astronomical right now. What's that? The numbers are so high right now. Yeah, but yeah they Franklin are County's not bad. It's Chittenden County's really, and I'll bet you it's a lot of younger people. But I have noticed that the number of people in the hospital, we were running about twenty, thirty people. Now we're up to about fifty. In the, in the whole state, yeah. and quite a few in ICU. So well, I think I can give you the stat for Franklin County. I think Franklin County's had over 500 cases, 500 confirmed cases, maybe more like 550 or six. About 50,000 people in Franklin County, so it's about a little over one one percent of Franklin County's population has had a confirmed COVID case. If you're interested in stats, which doesn't sound too bad, but you know, not too bad if you're not one of the right. people getting it. Well, when you think of what it's done done to the hospitality business and oh, the travel hey, business. Hey, tell, tell me about it. I happen to know an innkeeper pretty well who's it's, trying it's, to sell David, I rooms. can't even, the, the Elks Club closed down early November. Is that right? I, I'd like to a Friday night go out for beers and go out to dinner. Yeah. I mean, I am pretty close to 
living in the Northwest Correctional Center. I go nowhere, I do nothing, yeah. and this is the highlight of my week. I stopped it's, by the Legion, the American Legion, the other day, closed, sign on the door. We've been closed yeah, since November. Because, right, it, because it's called a social club. Yeah. And all social tennis, club. ask me when the last time I played tennis is. Well, I was just going to ask David, are you playing hockey this uh, year? They played for about two weeks, and that was it. And they oh, yeah, shut it forget down. It. And my wife wouldn't let me go anyway because okay. of that. That uh, episode they had in the hiker rink in Montpelier. Yeah. Uh, Though I will say that if anybody's played hockey and you have, the germs in a hockey rink yeah. <laughs> far outweigh anything that COVID can do to you because you got people spitting and snorting and coughing and hacking. David, from the minute you get in a rink and it's all that David, closed in. David, how when you play <laughs> hockey, you take your glove off, but Two fingers over one nostril. Yeah. Stick your head over the boards, <laughs> and you go like that, and let the old boogers go flying. Oh, and their guys are coughing and spitting. Yeah. No. Uh, and the stench in a locker room for hockey is unparalleled. A hockey bag. A hockey bag. <laughs> you could bottle that up and set it over to a rant, and yeah. they and yeah. sue for peace in five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, tennis down and out. Two of my regular guys for years, uh, Nick Haddon and Mike Blue and bagged that they just weren't going to play inside but become a moot point at this point because uh, no tennis. Hey, speaking of hockey, Hawk, got some hockey tonight. Yeah, I've got my your, your guys Canadian playing scarf, in fact, right? And in fact, I've got the DVR rolling. I just bought it today. Hundred dollars. You see behind you, or see the screen? Got some. four payments of twenty-five dollars to get my center ice package. So I've got the recording. I'm going to no, predict right now the Canadians will be in the final four. They will get no, out of their final north four. division. I, I feel very confident with this team this year. Huh. I think Carey Price has a chance to be the Vesna Trophy huh. winner, and the Canadians. Um, I'm, I'm, I'll go quickly. First line, regular line they've had the last couple of years, Philip Deneau centering Brendan Gallagher, Thomas Tatar. Second line, really good, Nick Suzuki centering Josh Anderson and Jonathan Drouin. Third line, Jesperi Kalkanemi uh, centering Yoel Armina and Tyler Toffoli. Fourth line, Notre Dame graduate Jake Evans. Centering Paul Byron and our two-way Lekkonen. I mean, this is a huh. solid, solid. Have they got any beef? Oh, this is a big team. Are they? Are they? How's their defense? So they have big, strong. Well, defensemen. they signed or traded for Joel Edmondson from uh, uh, Calgary. Big guy. Of course, they still have Shea Weber, Ben Sherratt, uh, Brett Kulak, and this kid, David. You got to watch out for number twenty-seven. 20 years old Russian kid, Alexander Romanov, um, hits like a truck. It's not that big. And Jeff Petrie, son of former Detroit Tiger pitcher back in the 80s, yeah. Dan Petrie, uh, is probably the most underrated player Wasn't in hockey. Wasn't Dan Petrie a, baseball, a basketball player? Dan Petrie pitched. He was the number two oh. guy behind the, the Tigers pitcher. Uh, oh, what the hell was his name? Tigers in the 80s, Duke, the number one pitcher. I can see not, it now. Not Mr. Lawler. Fidrich. No. Going, <laughs> I've no. got to go back a little earlier. No. Top pitcher for yeah. the Tigers. Oh, man. I, oh. oh, Jack Morris? That's it. Yeah. Hey, okay. guys that's came it. up with something that's amazing. It. That's it. And for this year, first time ever in his whole career, Carey Price actually has a very good backup goaltender, Jake Howland. Right. Mm -hmm. They traded uh, during the summer. Boy, that, that's a great pickup for Absolutely. you guys. Absolutely. And with a condensed <laughs> schedule. Uh, so it's going to be great hockey. We open up tonight against Toronto. Then I think we might have a three-game series. Sorry, are all those games is Toronto or some like Toronto? Are they just two different places where no, no, they're no. traveling? Home arenas. Okay. Uh, Boston opens up down in Jersey tomorrow no, night. No fans in Canada. No. I know. I think Tampa. I think there are three teams south of the border with some fans. Okay. I think. I think. Uh, I think there are three teams yeah. with a few fans. Yeah. Now. January 13th, so we're literally over three months since when the start of the season should have happened. Wow, right. Um, it's it, it's of course, great. when did the Stanley Cup? It was September, wasn't it? <sighs> so, or was, was it even it that early? Was it even later than that? No, September, I think it was October? August. But uh, and, August. And the goal for the NHL, they want everything done by July 15th so they can have a back, regular season uh, back year. to normal. Um, and whatever normal is now. So uh, 
if you're mm. asking what the Nighthawk is doing tonight, um, I'll, I'll hey, be you got hockey, hockey. You got hockey. That's great. Yeah. And uh, UVM, we haven't paid much attention. You know, when you don't go to the games, you, you just out of, out of sight, out of mind. The new coach got his first win against the Black Bears. Yeah. So the uh, hockey cats are 1-5-2 and two to start the season, no. playing Merrimack down in North Andover this weekend. Big news. Big news. P.K. Subban. And Lindsey Vaughn broke up. Yes. No, oh, is that right? Yeah. There's something. There's something that <laughs> you got from page six. Yeah. And <laughs> the uh, basketball team is playing at the Patrick Gym this weekend. Both games you can watch on your TV on ESPN three. Just hit the app. Mm -hmm. And again, you can't record it. You can't pause it. A tough stop for the hoopsters, but boy, they killed Binghamton. What 84-44 yeah. last game. Yeah. Looks like they're getting into form. Yeah. So that's it. That's the end of the show, and I want to thank our studio engineer, Richie Cunningham, Super Dave, the Duke, I'm the Nighthawk. Until next week, everyone, remember, you don't have to be a great athlete to be a good sport. Ciao. Bye-bye.